Praise the Lord. <clears throat> God is good. To you, God is good. To your family, God is good. <clears throat> and today, it'll be good in your life. Everything you have got, the Lord will multiply. Multiple miracles. Multiple touch. Multiple power. And tonight, you will carry go. And the Lord will bless every life in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. To all our congregations in all the countries, all over the continents, everywhere, online, in families, as individuals, children, young people, young adults, elderly people, senior citizens, I welcome every one of you. And I pray that what the Lord has done for you at this time will be multiplied. And it will grow in Jesus' name. The other time we had divine connection. Now this is divine touch. And now something else coming. Next month, by the grace of God, we're going to have divine solution. Now you may wonder, how is it divine solution? It's going from September 24th and going all the way to October 3rd, I'll tell you. Because of October 1, our independence in Nigeria, Friday, I want to touch your life that October 1 so that total independence. Anywhere, everywhere. And as we celebrate the independence of our country all the good all the solution all the empowerment all the prosperity all the security we ought to have in our independent nation that october 1st you'll experience and because october 1st a friday then we don't want to run back home. We want to celebrate on the second Saturday and on the third Sunday. And from that, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or past Sunday, no remnant of any oppression in your life in your family, in our country, in the continent, in Jesus' name. That's the reason why we have that period. That period will do you good. You know what? You will not die before that time. Clear your calendar and make sure you are there at that time and for me when i come to you at that time fresh anointing supernatural anointing let me come back we're still in enugu now and this is the conclusion of this divine touch for total freedom. Tonight. Help me. Tonight. Help me. Tonight. 
every yoke is broken all the fetters are shattered anything that tied you down everything is broken tonight in jesus name father in the name of jesus we well, thank you tonight we well, bless your name we know you're a mighty god you cannot fail everything we ask you are going to grant you said while we're still speaking you will answer and before we end you will bring answer to our problems i pray tonight everyone in your side will have supernatural energy yeah. heavenly power yeah. and everything remnants of the works of the devil remaining you will cancel tonight in every life in jesus name yeah. freedom for everyone yeah. renewal for everyone yeah. mountain moving miracle for everyone and Lord, I pray, no one, the little child, the youth, the young adults, the families, husbands and wives, elderly people, senior citizens, no one will miss the miracle touch tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Sit down in the blessings of the Lord. Tonight, we're looking at 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him it says when you believe that Jesus is the Christ the Messiah the mediator the Savior the Redeemer your substitute on the cross of Calvary, it says, you become born again. You believe that Christ came and he came to take your sins away. You believe he is the Christ. He is your substitute and he is your savior. Then, as you put that faith in him, he takes all your sins away. He takes all your guilt away. It takes all your condemnation away and you become a born again child of God. What then happens? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Any overcomer there today? Christ comes into you. And Christ is the conquering one. And as you believe, and you are born again, and you are connected with the Savior, the Master, the Master of every storm, and the Master of Satan, of the world, of angels, of every living thing. You believe that in your heart. You accept Him into your heart. Then it says, you overcome the world i want to announce to you that today you become an overcomer yeah. and then he says this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith tonight is going to be a great unforgettable time in your life in jesus name let's come to verse 18 in verse 18 we know you will know 
experimentally you will know experientially you will know in a practical definite way you will know we know that whatsoever whosoever is born of god sinneth not what does that mean it means when you are born again god places you in a very good place and then he sends mosquito net around you and those mosquitoes of sin they are not able to penetrate anymore it's like you put corn in a bottle and then you cork that bottle close that bottle and then but a glass bottle and the corn is inside and then the hen chicken cock whatever they're looking at the at the corn like this they want to get the corn and as they strike they only strike the glass bottle you get my point it will happen to you the lord shields you and the lord protects you and the seed that used to come and say i am going there where are they going they didn't know you came to this divine touch and they didn't know things are different now yeah. and so when that scene comes and he sees look at free corn for me to enjoy and they want to penetrate they will not penetrate your life anymore yeah. we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He remains under the mosquito net. He doesn't go out to visit the mosquitoes and to become a feast for the mosquitoes. He keepeth himself. He remains in that bottle in that shield in that tower and in that protection of the lord and as you remain he keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not he will not touch you they cannot touch you again because god puts you in a supernatural presence and no evil will touch your life again. Yeah. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put his hand, put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. You see, we're talking about divine touch. The Lord himself, the God of heaven, the most high, the powerful one, he puts forth his hand and he touches your mouth. The Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. It's the word of creation. I put the word of creation in your mouth is the word of power i have put the word of power in your mouth it's a word of decree i have put my word of decree in your mouth and whatever you say according to the promise of god will be fulfilled in jesus name now you must understand that as you have come you have touched the Lord and the Lord has touched you. He has put his word in your mouth. You carry power as you are going back home. You carry authority as you are going back home. And you will not allow any careless word, any curse word, any negative word to come out of your mouth. Because from now on, the words in your mouth will move mountain. Yeah. If any, anything comes in your body, comes in your life, whatever you say is what you are going to have. If you say, they have come again, I never get anything, 
I go to all those uh, divine touch meetings. Six days were there. And they told us, he didn't say the Bible tells us. He said, and they told us, days and days, but they have come again. If you welcome them back, that's the word of your mouth. But if you say, no, never. You didn't say that. Those things that used to come, the word is now in your mouth. It's the word of authority. It's the word of power. It's the word of the supernatural. It's a mountain moving word. It's a miracle working word. Once you say, no, never, that thing will flee away. Then the Lord put forth a sign and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, unto me, unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it tells us, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well, for I am or hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. Performance in your life from now on in Jesus' name. Verse 19. In verse 19, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Anywhere they are coming from, anywhere, anything they try to do, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee. You are not alone anymore. You are not isolated anymore. You are not in a far wilderness anymore that the power of the Lord cannot reach you. I will be with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The river will not drown you. The furnace of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn you. And the lion den of Darius will not eat you up. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. He will always deliver you. Yeah. You have the name of Jesus, he will always deliver you. Yeah. You have his word of power, he will always deliver you. Yeah. Tonight, as we look at those passages, one in John, first John, the other one in Jeremiah. I'm talking to you on becoming unconquerable through the divine touch. Becoming unconquerable through the divine touch. Three things we're looking at. Number one, transformation and victory over the deadly three. One, two, three. Over the deadly three, there are three enemies of every man. Three enemies of every believer. And they are deadly. The deadly three. But thank the Lord. The Lord has given you transformation and victory already in Jesus' name. The secret is the born again. And thank God, if you have not given your life to the Lord yet, you have another chance tonight. And the Lord has been waiting for you. And the Spirit of God will draw you. There will be an urge inside you that you want to follow the Lord. And as you respond, the Lord will say, welcome. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the family and welcome to the wonders of God tonight. Welcome. When you become a child of God, then you have the power and you have the possibility of transformation 
and victory over the deadly three. Number two, trust in the virtue in his declared truth. Trust in the virtue in his declared truth. Number three, in the triumph of victors. Any brother Victor around there? Any sister Victoria around there? Victory, victory. Somebody shout victory. victory. Triumph of victors through the divine touch. Number one now. Number one is transformation and victory over the deadly three. And as we look at this, the deadly three enemies of a child of God, of a man of God, of a woman of God, of a born again member of the family of God, three deadly enemies. Number one, the world. Number two, the devil. Number three, the flesh. But thank God, you as you are born again, and if you have not been born again, you are getting born again tonight. You are surrendering your life to the Lord tonight. And then the power to overcome will come in every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're looking at the victory that comes, transformation and victory over the deadly three. Number one, the victory over the world. Look at that first John chapter 5 and verse 4. First John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Overcometh. That's in the continuous present tense. The world might come against you. All the pollutions of the world might want to come into your life again and all the practices of the world might want to come to your life again and all those uh, things that the people of the world do may want to come into your life again but the power within and the authority within will come against it when the enemy shall come like a flood. The Spirit of God will lift up the standard and say, stop there. That thing will stop. And the pollutions of the world and the practices of the world and all those perditions of the world will not touch your life anymore. Power, power within, power around, power in your life, anywhere you go. However, the temptation may be strong as you depend on that power. The Lord himself will protect you from the world in Jesus' name. Uh, look, look at that again. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith you know if your experience of salvation is going to be a bona fide genuine definite experience from God you have to remain free by his grace by his power, by his presence in your life, you have to remain free from all those things coming from the world. In James chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction, look at this, and to keep himself unspotted from the world to keep himself you remain in that bottle you don't allow anything to come and you don't come out of there he keepeth himself from all those dirty dirty things of the world and as you do that you'll be preserved 
from all the things of the world that want to come and defile your life. Amen. Look at James chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. James chapter 4. We're looking at verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? There are people who go to church regularly, whatever church, good church, high church, deep church, deeper church, glorious church, gracious church, whatever. But they are still in the practices of the world, in the festivals of the world, in the idolatry of the world, in the boyfriend, girlfriend of the world, in the things, the drunkenness of the world. Don't you know adulterers, adulteresses? Don't you know that the friendship and the fellowship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world in fellowship with the world, identifying with the world, drinking their drinks and doing what they're doing, acting like them and moving around like them whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god i pray you'll not be an enemy of god that's why he gives you the victory over enemy number one deadly enemy and then because of the grace of God in your life, you will be free. Yeah. I said you will be free. Yeah. Number two is the victory over the devil. Are you there? Yeah. You know, there are people, they say they are born again. They say they are children of, and then they do something devilish. They do something diabolical. They do something, you know, that is damnable, damning the soul. And then you say, ah, my friend, I thought you were born again. How did you do that? Uh -huh. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. The devil does not make you do anything. You do it yourself and then you give the credit to the devil. From today, born again. Born again. Somebody shout, born again. The devil will not have power over you. I can't hear your amen. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody becomes a soldier, he dresses different. He walks different. He looks different. He carries himself different. But so, if you're born again, you're a soldier of the cross. And the way you think, and the way you take the promise of God and the way you walk, the narrow way that leads to heaven, different from the past. And when they see the soldier coming, all those rough fears will clear out of your way. Yeah. You will have the victory. Yeah. Uh, look at this, look at this. In First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Keepeth himself. It doesn't go where there are 99 devilish people, and he only is the only one that goes into the maze of the devilish 99 people to make 100 he keepeth himself away from them he doesn't go where they are you know drinking and dancing in the nightclub and breaking bottles and you know killing one another he keepeth 
himself. It doesn't go where they're using substance and hard drugs and then they're smoking all those things and then he says I'm born again now. I want to go into their means. He keeps himself. It doesn't go into the place where you have prostitutes and then he's hanging around there because that's where the devil reigns as master. Now that you are a child of God, now that you are born again, he keepeth himself. And that wicked one touches him not. You didn't say amen to that one. The Lord will keep you. He will keep you from the devil. He will keep you from all devilish actions. It will keep you from all the activities and all the act actions of Satan in Jesus' name. Can the Lord keep you? Will the Lord keep you? You put yourself in the place where the Lord says, That's my child. He doesn't mix with their crowd. He is mine. He is mine. He is mine. And then he says, And that wicked one touches him not look at something here now is first john chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 4 it says ye of god little children anybody there ye of god little children if you are born again ye of god little children you know the salvation of the adult is the same salvation of the child. You know, you catch a child, he says, I'm born again, and he gave the testimony. Praise the Lord. I came to this divine touch. I am born again, and we are happy for you. And then you find that uh, born again child is telling a lie, blatant lie, open lie. A visible lie that everybody will know this is a lie. And then you say, my boy, come here. I thought I heard you giving testimony that you are born again. Born again people don't tell lies. Oh, it says, sir, I am only a child. And the salvation I have is the salvation of a child. Ah. The gari you take as a child, is it uh, different from the gari adult people take? The rice you take as a child, is it different from the rice adult people take? The water you drink, is it different from the water adults drink? No, salvation is salvation. If you are born again, you are a little child. If you are born again, you are a growing adult. If you are born again, you are a woman. If you are born again, you are a man. Salvation is salvation. And that salvation will make you an overcomer, even at your level in Jesus' name. You find a woman. Born again, born again, saying some foolish things. Doing some foolish things. You say, Madam, come. I thought you said you were born again. Yes, Pastor, I'm born again. But you know now, I'm a woman. And they tell us that men have nine ribs. And women have only seven. And we women are the weaker vessel. So my salvation is a woman's salvation. I know why you are laughing. You are laughing at such a person like that. How can that be? Salvation is salvation. I said salvation is salvation. When salvation comes into somebody's life, it comes with transformation. It comes with a change of life. And I pray your salvation will be heavenly. And your salvation will be real in Jesus' name. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Did I hear a good amen there? Greater, greater. When you are born again, he says, I stand at the door and knock. 
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him. And then I will abide there. I'll fellowship with him. I'll sup with him. When you are born again, Christ lives on the inside of you. And that Christ is greater than every devil anywhere. And he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Three deadly enemies. Number one, the world. Number two, the devil. Number three now is the flesh. Look at this. Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 19. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh. That's it there. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest. Look at this, look at this. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, verse 21, envies, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are many people that do not understand that word flesh. But the passage makes it clear. The words of the flesh is not talking of flesh and bone. It's not talking of your skin, your muscles, the sinews, and the thing that make up your flesh. What does it mean? Flesh. Let me show you. Just keep your Bible open. Verse 19, verse 20, verse 21. Flesh. F is filthiness. And it tells us there, it says fornication, adultery, uncleanness. That's the flesh. When there's adultery, when there's fornication, F, when there's uncleanness, that's the flesh. And then L is right there, lasciviousness. When people, they give themselves to the actions of sin and to the practice of sin and they just they dive into the sea into the ocean of iniquity and transgression and they don't think about how it will affect their lives how it will affect their neighbors how it will affect their husband how it will affect their wife how it will affect their children lasciviousness lost or lawlessness that's the l there flesh f L E, you'll find it there. Look at the next verse there. You'll find uh, emulations. And then as you go to verse 21, you will find uh, envies. F for fornication, for adultery, for uncleanness, L for lasciviousness and uh, lust and lawlessness. And then E you find emulations and envying and excesses what are the excesses wrath drunkenness rebellions you find somebody a little thin minute unnecessary insignificant thing they fly up in wrath they're angry whatever is in their hand they throw or they smash excesses the temper is not under control and then it talks of envies it talks of you know somebody is having something good and 
he was satisfied with what he had before he saw Mr. So-and-so, before he saw Mrs. So-and-so. And then envy and jealousy and then emulation. That's the flesh. That's the flesh. The spirit doesn't act like that. That is the flesh. And then is, you find it there, strive, mentions that. In verse 20, and seditions, it mentions that that's the flesh. When there is, uh, you know, so much strife, everything, uh, uh, what's happening today? I've not seen a fight today to fight. I've not seen somebody to punch today. I've not seen someone to argue with today. And they find something that will bring strife. What about the man that is beating the wife at home? What about the woman that locks the man, the husband up at home? What about the person that is ill-treating and oppressing, almost killing the mage or the servant living with them? What about the person that, you know, you are learning something mechanic or whatever, or you are learning trade under them, and they treat you like an animal? That's the flesh. And then he talks of that as he talks about the sedition and the strife. Then he says, and such like, and such like. That means the murders, the variance, the idolatry, the witchcraft. This is the flesh. F, fornication. L, lasciviousness and the others. E, the emulations and the envies. S, the strife and also the seditions. And then H, you find it in, those, in that passage, you find hatred and heresies. And then we join hypocrisy. I pray as we come and we say we have the divine touch that brings salvation, divine touch that brings transformation. The blood of Christ will cleanse and wipe and wash everything away from our lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. You have the victory. Yeah. I have the victory. Yeah. Victory over the world. Victory over the devil. And victory over the flesh in Jesus' name. Yeah. If you've got the victory, let your amen sound like a victorious amen. I can tell you have the victory. And the Lord will maintain that victory in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now. We come to point number two, trusting the virtue in his declared truth. The truth that God himself declares. It's like a decree. Once God has said something in a promise, in a prophecy, and as a privilege for you, it's like a decree. And there is a divine virtue from heaven that comes along with that declared truth. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. I'm just wondering why the amen is canting. And then in verse 9, then the Lord put his hand, put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That's the word, that's the word of truth. That's the word of power. That's the same word that created the heavens and the earth. It's a creative word. It's a mountain-moving word. And it is a supernatural word. I have put my words 
in thy mouth. Verse 12. In verse 12, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of salvation, I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of healing, I will hasten my word to perform it. The word that crushes the devil and the devil's power out of your life, I will hasten my word to perform it. To hasten means to hurry up. God says in your life tonight, you will not come late. Whatever he has promised is going to grant you. He will hasten his word and he'll perform that word in your life. That's why I know whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be protected, shall be preserved, because he will hasten in his word to perform it. Isaiah chapter 55. We're reading from verse 11. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 verse 11. 11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish the word is coming to you what of power what of salvation what of healing what that will move your mountain yeah. and it will not return back unto God void it will accomplish that which I please yeah. and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it yeah. the word is sent your light tonight it will be done the question I want to ask is this When will that word Be performed in your life When Will that mountain Be removed out of your life Okay Let's look at Ezekiel Chapter 12 Verse 28 Ezekiel Chapter 12 Verse 28 Look at this Therefore Say unto them, the Lord sent me to you to say unto you. You didn't hear that one. The Lord sent me to you to tell you what I'm telling you now. Therefore say unto them, thus says the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore but the word that I shall speak shall be done word of salvation it shall be done word of healing it shall be done word of deliverance it shall be done tonight when you're here, you want to be saved, you want to be born again, the Lord is waiting for you. And if you want that salvation now, wherever you are, raise up your hand. The moment you raise up your hand, it shall be done. If you are sick, lay your hand. Or you have the problem, raise up the other hand. When you hear the name of Jesus and the final amen, it shall be done. Yeah. If there's a long-standing problem 
and then you present it to the Lord tonight and then I confirm it by a word of prayer and I say it is done it shall be done therefore say unto them thus says the Lord God there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore but the word which I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Your life today, amen. Yeah. Your family today, amen. Yeah. Concerning that person in the hospital, that you are concerned about as we we'll speak the word here i send the word to that man to that woman on the hospital bed it shall be done in jesus name look at hebrews chapter 6 reading from verse 18 hebrews chapter 8 Verse eight, chapter 6, verse 18. That by two immutable, unchangeable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. Impossible for God to lie. Which we might have a strong consolation the consolation we have is not an ordinary consolation okay maybe it will happen there's no maybe in the word of god it will happen we have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before us and thank god you are going to get a miracle today yeah. you know some people say i don't know how to get a miracle when somebody says come and get a cup of water i don't know how to get a cup of water just get up and come and then stretch up your hand the water will be given to you yeah. the miracle will be given to you the salvation will be given to you. Come and receive. You will have. It's impossible for God to lie. If he said, come, I will give you rest. I'll give you salvation. I'll give you hope. I'll give you deliverance. I'll give you healing. I'll give you prosperity. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then you say, surely, surely, somebody shall surely. surely. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will live with God forever and ever. Tonight is your night. Point number three now, we're looking at triumph of victors through the divine touch. Triumph. Triumph. Somebody shout triumph. The triumph of victors through the divine touch. Come to Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. For behold... I have made thee. While you're sitting down there, I have made thee. While you are praying, I have made thee. While you accept the truthfulness of the word of God, I have made thee this day. This day. This day. It will not pass you by. I have made you a defense city 
and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof against the people of the land you see in life at home if you are afraid of the people around you they're afraid of your wife you're afraid of your husband you're afraid of the children all the things in your heart or your vision or your dream all the possibilities in your life that ought to come out you see everybody around you surrounding you like enemies you, you're even afraid to talk you can't bring out any vision or dream and then you go out and your neighbors are now living with you you look at them like this their faces terrify you you can you have taken a decision i've decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the walls behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back god is preparing a kingdom I will be there, no turning back, no turning back. Then you come to your neighbors and they look at you like this. Then you forget your salvation. You forget your commitment to the Lord and you forget the decision you have made because you see everybody as enemies. You go to school and while you're studying, ah, Akada book one first class no play every day read 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 uh-huh he wants to collect all the a's as they make fun of you if you become afraid all your desires all your aspirations everything you want to do everything will be drowned in the sea and then you're selling in the market and they come around, they're walking up and down, and they're looking at what you are selling, and they're making some bad comments. You are afraid everywhere, at home, in the community, everywhere on the street. Your life is brought down with fear. A person like that will not fly, will not go up. That's why today, as we come to this final session of divine touch, supernatural touch will come on you in Jesus' name. All the people you were afraid of before, they will be afraid of you. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar, bracing walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. No fear. You will climb every mountain before you. You will achieve every vision the Lord has given you. You know, after healing, yes, healing is good, when you were blind, you couldn't see the mountain. Now a miracle has taken place. Your eyes are open. And there you see the mountain. The next thing to do, open your eyes and run and climb that mountain. And I see you on top. I said, I see you on top. What's the use of open eyes if you cannot walk in the narrow way? What's the use of the open eyes if you cannot climb the mountain? What's the use of the open, open eye if you cannot write what you have in your mind to write? What's the use of the open eye, of the healing, of the strength if you cannot use that strength and go to the top of the mountain of God, you will rise higher. And then he tells us here, uh, look at um, chapter 
15 of Jeremiah and in verse 20 Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 and I will make thee unto the people a faced breathing wall I'm waiting for your amen and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee you know thank you little boy there sometimes somebody says i don't want to fight i just want to be gentle and fold my hand and somebody is coming before you and he's, he wants to fight you see leave me alone i don't want to fight and then he takes you takes you up smashes you on the ground hey, i don't want to fight you want them to kill you fight we fight the good fight of faith with salvation with the power of god and with the assurance of the word of god while they are coming and you realize greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world and when they are coming you say you want to fight I'll surprise you. I'm coming from the mountain top of transformation. And I hold the authority in my hand. And the Lord told me, He told me you were coming, that you will fight against me, but you will not prevail. If you love your life, clear out of the way. All the enemies will clear out of your way victory victory did you hear my people the other time take it back i said take it back somebody wants to take your wife mr somebody i don't want to fight please leave my wife your wife i'm taking this one but i will not fight you don't know how to fight with prayer how to fight with the sword of the spirit the word of god how to fight with the declaration and the confession of your mouth they oppress you they walk on you and they put all this rubbish on you and then i don't want to fight of course of course you will fight and everything the devil has taken away while you are like that you wake up like a giant i said you wake up like a giant and everything everything you have given into the hands of the devil as you rise up everything you lost you are going to get them again in jesus name He had told Jehoshaphat. He said, do you know, all these cities have been for us. But while we just left and we let go, they've taken it. Jehoshaphat will do thing. Come and help me. We're going to take it back. If that wicked king knows his right, and he knows his property, and he knows what belongs to him, and he wants to take it back, what is it believers, born again people, children of God, all diseases that are given to us in the market, if the sinners are prospering, in the city, if the sinners who are getting land and houses, in the everywhere, if the, and then we are just getting the remnant. We are at the back of the queue today. Come to the front of your queue. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Why? For I am with thee. The one that never lost any battle when you are born again, when you become a child of God, it says, I your redeemer, I your savior, I your substitute, I that went to the cross of Calvary and I overcame for you. I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. I am delivered. I am delivered. I am delivered. 
I have delivered. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 21 there. In verse 21 there. And I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of Mr. Terrible. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Reading from verse 15. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. And beat them small and shall make the hills as child. In verse 16, it says, Thou shalt find them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the world we shall scatter them. Anything that will stand in your way as you are born again now, anything that will stand in your way as Calvary has made a mark in your life, anything that will stand in your way, the wind will scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. God's people, the kingdom is in our hand. The promises are in our hands. The decree of heaven, that decree is in our hand. We will overcome. I will overcome. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4. We're looking at verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me. And the Lord shall deliver who? That's Paul the Apostle, born again. That's Paul the Apostle, a member of the kingdom of God. That's Paul the Apostle. He came out of darkness. He came to the light. That's Paul the Apostle. He came out of religion. And he came unto the Lord as a savior, as his redeemer. And he said, now that I am saved. You have to be saved. And thank God tonight, you are going to be saved. Yeah. You're missing a lot when you are not born again. You're missing a lot. You're fighting against the world all by yourself. How can you overcome? You're missing a lot when you're not born again. You're fighting against the devil all by yourself. You're already down. You're missing a lot when you're not born again. And you're fighting against the flesh all by yourself. But today you say, now I see. And I come. And I belong to the Lord. And I'm going to enter the life of triumph. The life of the conqueror. And the life of the overcomer. Just give your life to the Lord. That settles it all for you. Your name is written in the book of life. And anywhere you go, unseen, invisible angels will be going before you. All around you will be the bodyguard of the heavenly host. Underneath you will be the everlasting arms. Above you will be the shield and the umbrella that will shield you from every attack of the world in Jesus' name. But you have to come out of your sin and come to the Savior. And the moment you come, the Lord will become your deliverer. And the Lord shall deliver me. 
from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever born again born again born again in first in hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 let us therefore come let us therefore come the invitation is coming to you again and the lord is asking who is it i have salvation waiting for you i have healing waiting for you I have deliverance waiting for you. If you will only come, then you will come. Then you will tell your friend, if he's nearby there, come. This is our time. You tell your wife, this is the time. Wouldn't it be wonderful that you give your life to the Lord the same time together? In a particular crusade, there was this man having real family trouble was the wife and the wife ran away actually they divorced because the woman said it's too much i cannot bear this again the man said go your way i'm fed up too and for some years they were apart and then there was a crusade like this the man came without knowing the woman was there the woman came without knowing the man was there the altar call was made in that place there was uh, enough room to call them forward and so they came forward and um, the husband came forward to receive uh, the salvation of the lord the wife came for on her own they didn't know that either one was there came out to receive the salvation of the lord and then they repented of their sins and they turned to the Lord and they had salvation. And while the counseling was going on and they were taking their names and all that, the husband saw, ah, who is that? <laughs> Look at that. She came and then after putting the name down, went to her side. Ah, so and so, you are here? While they gave their lives to the Lord, that's how they settled. And they didn't go to separate homes that night. They went together as new husband and wife. A change will come to your family. A change will come to your business. A change will come to your life encourage him encourage her encourage your friend there the lord is calling christ is calling let us therefore come us let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need grace is available tonight salvation available tonight and deliverance available tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. Salvation, salvation, peace of mind, grace of God, becoming a member of the kingdom of God, becoming a child of God. Let us come, let us come, let us come to the throne of grace. Grace is available tonight. You have the final chance in this crusade tonight. And you're giving your life to the Lord that he'll forgive you and save you wherever you are. Raise up your hand there. God bless you. It's a chance you will not want to miss. If you're raising up your hand here, there, online, your room there, in the hospital there, or you are hearing over the radio, you are watching over the television, or you are before the screen, the Lord is with us here, with you there. Raise up your hand, stand up. 
Come, stand up. The Lord is waiting for you. God bless you there. God bless you there. Thank you. God bless you there. It's going to be a day of transformation for you. Stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. Online people, God bless you there. The satellite location, God bless you there. Watching over the television, webcast, over the radio, anywhere you are in the hospital, just signify the Lord can understand. You're giving your life to the Lord now. While you're standing, tell the Lord, I come out, out of my sin. Tell the Lord, I come out. Out of darkness, tell the Lord. I come out. Out of my iniquity and transgression, tell the Lord. I come out. Out of that gang. Out of the filthiness of the flesh. Lord, I come out. Out of my weakness. Out of my slavery to satan lord i come out tell the lord there forgive me lord tell him save my soul lord tell him receive me into your kingdom tell him tell him you believe that Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary and that his sacrifice is enough to save you, tell him. Tell him you receive his salvation now and you receive him, Christ the Savior, into your heart as many as received him he gave power to become the sons the daughters of god even to them that believe on his name lord i believe i believe you receive me now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we're standing up, raise up your hand. So you join your faith with my faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who has surrendered sincerely unto Christ, receiving Christ into their hearts now as Savior. Forgive them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Write their names in the book of life. And let a definite change happen in every heart now in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness of their hearts. They are now children of God. Thank you, Lord. We know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep standing. A state of ourselves is coming. And in all the various locations, the leaders there will come and lead us in this time of counseling. Keep standing. Counselors, please get to them outside and inside and in all the halls give them the converse sleep let them feel it correctly their address and their names as well as their telephone number make sure everything is correctly done after they fill the card they give you back they give them the converse package and in all the location the same thing should be going on now. And for those online, you have the link over there, the spread. Please then open it and then 
fit in the form and submit. Or you can contact the telephone number that have been displayed, can send a text message to that too. And for those who listened and made the addition over the radio, please contact us or contact the nearest Deeperai Bible Church to you in the state from where you listen to. Or if it's in any good state here, yeah, just contact the nearest Deeperai Bible Church to you. And remember, this coming Sunday, for all those people, the people that gave their lives to the Lord, we're going to have Converse Banquet. Believers Lally. And for Enugu Metropolis, it's going to take place here at the campground. And in all other region, regional headquarters, as well as local government headquarters, so that it can be close to you. Be there on Sunday, 3 p.m., and also, when you come, we're going to give you a book written by a father in the Lord that will help you step by step to grow in your faith and to maintain your victory over the, the three deadly enemies and the Lord that has saved you will keep you. Cancel us, please. Let's ensure that None that gave their life to Christ is overlooked. Please, in hall one, two, three, in all the halls, let's get to them and let's get all their details. And outside too, so many people outside, please, if in the hall you have nobody counseling, quickly join the people outside. We have so many people outside, Almost more than the people inside. Quickly get to them so that you can help the cancerous over there because the people outside are far more. Therefore, sometimes it's overwhelming the cancerous assigned outside. So please quickly get there and help them to take all the details. Once you finish, you hand over the combat package, then you correct the sleep and hand over to supervisor so that we can correct, gather them together and then be able to sort them out for immediate follow up and other things. Online, please, just go to the link over there, open and fill the form and submit. Or you can send a text message to the phone number that are displayed. Or you can call and you'll be directed as what to do. And remember on Sunday, 5th of September, we'll all be together, both here and in all the locations, not only in Enugu, all the locations all over the world to have these believers banquet. As we do, the blessings of God will abound in your life. Cancel us, please. Let's be fast. Hold one. How far are we true? Okay, hold one is true, but hold two. You are true, too. Make sure that everybody has been attended to. I see some people being attended to here. So... Let them finish. Hall three. Hall three, you are true, you are sure. Everybody has been attended to, please. Let's ensure that everybody, I can see, see some people writing in hall three. Let's not be quick. Let's ensure, because this is the most important hour to help these people that gave their life to the Lord so that they will be able to grow in their faith. Hall four, please. Are we true? I see, see some other people, please. Let's ensure that everyone is attended to. And those other people, maybe you didn't give your life or you have done it before, and then you are not part of the council. Be talking to God now because tonight, final night, final day in August, and 
you need something and you must get something. Be praying, telling the Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. Be telling the Lord, why can't sellers are rounding up the account selling? How seven are we true? Please, once you finish your counseling, don't come back. Stay there so that you can encourage the people as they are receiving their testimony, you are bringing them out. You encourage those who have real problems to receive. Sometimes just a little encouragement, stand up, stand up, stand up, can make that lame man jump out of the wheelchair. But if nobody is there to encourage him, saying, the prayer has been made, power has been released, stand up, or open your eyes, that person may feel where I am left out. That's why cancerous please don't go back. Members of the choir, stay with them. And all other cancerous stay with them. And then, as the prayer has been made, they will, as they get their miracle, you bring them out. How two are we true now? How three are we true? God bless you. How four? How four are we true? Okay, God bless you. How five? Okay, all six are we true? God bless you. All seven. Okay, what of outside? Are we true outside? Wonderful. Rise on your feet now. The hour has come. And Pastor have told us, carry go. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord is here. Yeah. The healing is here. Yeah. The deliverance is here. Yeah. He gives everybody. He is no respecter of persons. And it's yours to receive. Yeah. And so you understand. If your neighbor can receive, you also can receive. He will do it for you. You will not go back home empty handed. Raise up your hand. Lay the other hand where you have a challenge. Blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will open. Our lives, people will rise up and walk. Broken bones of a joint together. Yeah. Swellings will vanish away. Yeah. Brain problems will be cleared up. Yeah. And everything, pain, this one walking here, walking there, everything will go tonight. Yeah. Cancer will be healed. Incurable diseases will be healed in Jesus' name. COVID will be cleared away. Be it unto you according to your faith. The Lord is ready now, and the name is going to work wonders in your life. Lay your hand when you have the challenge. When you hear the final amen, you will know it is done. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we thank you, Lord, because you are a mighty God. The God that cannot lie. You have given us the promise. You said whatsoever we ask in the name of of your only begotten Son will be given unto us. Yeah. And we know by stripes we are healed. Yeah. I pray, Lord, your healing virtue will go out to everyone, everywhere, right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Those who are here, inside, Outside, 
those were various congregations all over the country all over the continents right now at this moment touch them heal them in jesus name i pray lord the miracle power will touch everyone right now that brain problem you are delivered in jesus name swelling goiter elephantiasis hernia be removed in jesus name Answer, hear the word of the Lord. It's a decree from heaven. You cannot remain there. Yeah. Cancer patient be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ulcer be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Diabetes, those urinating so many times in the day, so many times in the night, the Lord touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Prostrate, you are healed. Lord, I pray every appearance every symptom of that prostrate take it away in jesus name long-standing problem of a mountain lord i pray clear it away from their bodies now in jesus name lord this final night I pray every sick person, every oppressed person, every demonized person, touch them, heal them, deliver everyone in Jesus' name. Healing virtues from heaven flow into every life right now. Receive your miracle. Yeah. Receive your healing. Yeah. Receive your deliverance. Yeah. Lord, show yourself strong on behalf of everyone. Yeah. Confirm the miracle in every life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Put your hand together for Jesus. You have received. Begin to do what you are not able to do before. You have received. Check yourself. Check yourself now. In all seven at the back, you were lame. Rise up now and begin to work. Anywhere you are, anywhere, whatever, whatever the problem, you are free. Final night. Final night. I have got my own. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Don't check another person. Check yourself. And don't go without coming out to give your testimony. Check yourself. Check yourself. You can stand. Stand up. Don't be afraid. Stand up. It's worrying and the cancer is gone. Check yourself. Check yourself. It's happening already. It's happening already. It's happening already. 
Put your hand together for Jesus. Already people are coming out. As you describe your miracle, come out to all seas. It's happening already. Celebrate, celebrate. All seven, rise up and walk. You will not go with your problem. Outside, inside, rise up. Out of your wheelchair, open your eyes, you can see. Raise your crosses, your, your crush, and begin to walk. In all the location, check yourself. As you, do, you see already, see the, already see that man walking. See him walking, see him walking. The sick are up. Begin to rejoice, brethren. Begin to praise the name of the Lord. Check yourself. You have received. Check yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. Put your hand together for Jesus. Miracle everywhere. Look at the cross. Do you see over there too? Horses. See the cross is up. I say get up because you are free. Look at him coming. Make a way for him. Anywhere you are, you are the one holding yourself. The power has been released. If you are not rising up and walking, you are the one holding yourself. Open your eyes and see. The cancer pain is gone. Wonderful. Look at mama. Look at mama. Put your... Tonight is tonight. You will not live here with your problem. Check yourself. Look at that. Look at that. Enugu, are you seeing? Look at what is happening over there. As you describe your miracle, come to all seas. Power, 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 power have been released. In all the location, check yourself. Come, 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 come this way. God is great. Check yourself, check yourself. As you discover, you need to come. Outside, bring them in. Bring them in, bring them in. Check yourself. Miracle night. Miracle night. Wonderful. Broken legs are mended. Broken bones are joined. Amen. Shake yourself and come. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. This is the time to demonstrate what God has done for you. As you see your miracle, please come to all seas. From outside, everywhere in all the halls, as the Lord is touching you, look at the crutches. Put your hand together for Jesus. If you were blind, please open your eyes. If you brought somebody deaf and dumb, check that person right now. You will discover that by the special grace of God, he can hear, he can speak. Check up, check up, check up. Nobody should be a spectator. Nobody should be a spectator. Come to all seas. Many people are there already, but come and join them. Let's hear your, tonight is the final night. Check yourself. And if you listen over the radio, check yourself too. Because the power has been released. And if you are in the hospital and you listen through the satellite or all those things, you are connected. Check yourself because you are delivered. You are healed. Check yourself and come. Check yourself and come. All our leaders, please, our overseers and group coordinators, please join them to interview many, many people that are here already in all seas. Keep checking yourself. 
The power is still at work. The power is still at work. The power is still at work. Anywhere you are, the power is touching you there. Check yourself. As you describe the miracle, come quickly because we want to start taking the testimony. Please, our counselors, get them ready. We want to start the, our overseers and leaders, please. Get them ready. We want to start taking the testimonies now. And as we start the testimony, just be checking yourself. You must not live here with your problem. The Lord have done it. The power has been released. Don't wait till tomorrow. Right now, you have got it. Come and let's hear your testimony. Come quickly. Wonderful. Come quickly. Come this way. Maybe your miracle happened on Thursday. You are proof now. And you are sure what God has done. Join them. You have not given your testimony. Join them now. Our, our leaders, are we ready? Want to start? If you are ready, please bring the first, second, and third. Line them up. And then while others have been interviewed. You describe your miracle, please. Come to hall number six. Very quickly, very quickly. Tonight is power night. Already the power has been released. Keep coming, keep coming. As you describe your miracle, join them in all six. Our leaders, please, let's have them. Join them in all six. Wherever you are, you must not live here with your problem. Come to all six and let's hear your testimony tonight. Please, can we start? Can we start? There are so many people over there. Pastors, please, let's start. to begin the testimonies now but as you are listening to the testimony be checking yourself because the power has been released and as you discard your miracle don't carry it, don't hide it come to hall six let them have the false testifier praise the lord praise the living god Yes, my brethren, I'm here before you. My names are Blessings John. By his grace, I'm saved. I'm from one group of this tree. I want to testify the goodness of the Lord in my life. It was 2014 when our GS came to Enugu here on August. That was when, after the program, that was when I had my second son. During that time, I was praying over for another pregnancy, and the Lord answered me. Along the line, I, as I registered for Antinental, when I was eight months pregnancy, the doctor that examined me on that Antinental day, he told me that, Madam, your, your tummy is very big, and your tummy shows that you have reached nine months. And I told the doctor, doctor, I have not reached nine months. I just reached eight months. He said that he's going to send me for emergency scan, of which I went. After the scan, 
the result came out. It was very bad that I had infections and where the baby lies, there's much flu. So I, when I took the result, the following week, I went continental again. Another doctor that saw that result, the doctor told me again that, Madam, this result is very bad. We are going to send you for another scan. I said, no problem. Along the line, me and my husband were praying over it because we're not happy. We're praying, we're praying. Reaching a day, I was sleeping in the dream. Why in the dream? I found myself in a place where there's floor everywhere and I don't know where to pass. I say, where will I pass? My brethren, behold and behold. When I look at my back, I saw our GS. And he told me, go. As soon as he command me, go. The whole floor dry up. And I went on a dry land. And I wake up. When I wake up, I went for the second scan. The scan, the result was very good. There was no problem. You cannot trace any stress of any problem. And that was how I delivered successfully. Even after delivery, one of the female doctors came and met me. Said, Madam, did you deliver through CS? I said, No. I deliver on my own. He said, The God you are serving is a great God. Continue to serve Him. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Another one, it was last month when our GS went to Calabar for signs and wonder for the needy. Brethren, throughout those six days of the program, I was in the program. But on, Sun on Monday, I felt sick. Why then, on that very Monday, the Lord touched me. But after that, when I went home, I was praising God. My neighbor, they came into my, our parlor, and one of them that came in, went, he came and embraced, embraced me. But along the line, the following day being Tuesday, the sickness came up again. I could not eat. I could not do anything. But on that Tuesday, I came back, I went back to the church. I said, God, see me through. After that Tuesday, I was, I was lying down through it in the church. But after that, being the following day on Wednesday, I couldn't go to work. When I was lying down in my house, behold, the sleep carried me, and I saw our state pastor with our GS, they sat together, when I went, GS stood up. He stood up for me to sit down. I said, no, sir. Why then? He touched his hand on my head and I woke up. That was the, head. That was the end of that headache because I was having a very severe headache that could not allow me to do anything. Praise the Lord! Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen! The next survival, please make it brief and go straight to the testimony so that we can take. We have many people there. Praise the Lord. My name is One Who Faith Amanda. I worship at Obed Camp. My testimony is I had a swelling on my breast. So, and it's a belong. I don't know when, I can't explain when this thing started, but it a belong the swelling we were there. So, I didn't let anybody know about it. I only told my mom and my sister, I keep all that for myself. This swelling, I've been going through all pains. The pain was so severe. So I heard that the man, our daddy in the Lord is coming to Enugu here. So I pray that God should help me to, because in a place I'm working, my madam doesn't allow us to move anyhow. So I pray that it's on that most that I must be in this program. As the Lord may have it, I'm here. So on Thursday, I came here with that swelling on my breast. So I prayed for it on that Thursday. The thing was, the pain was so severe. I prayed for it on that Thursday. I went home. 
it was as if nothing happened. Then it was on um, Friday, Th that thing burst. I came here and prayed. After the, pr the, the prayer of the man of God, I went home and for me to go and bathe. I saw that that thing has burst. Then on Saturday, the thing was dried up. I said, ah, ah. I, because any time I want to go and bathe, I'll be commanding that, I'll be talking to that thing as if it's a human being. That this place is not a place for you. You can't stay here. So the thing dried up on that Saturday. The pain was not there anymore. Put then, your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. It was on Sunday. The, after uh, the man of God ministered to us, um, I went home. Then on Monday morning, I woke up. Something to, uh, came into my mind that I should check that thing. I check on it because I said, you as you have dried up, you will not stay here. So that thing, as I, I opened my clothes to check on it, the thing fell down. So I even have it here on my hand. I, and I want to assure you, as the Lord has healed me, God will meet you at the point of your knees in Jesus' name. Put your hand together for Jesus. The swelling on the breast busted and the thing fell up and everywhere dried up. Please, when you get there, as much as possible, make it brief so that we can give chance to many people. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. My name is Benjamin Uchechuku Obi. I am from Oji region. My testimony is about severe headache I suffered weeks ago with accompanying weakness of the body. On Friday's night, when our Father in the Lord was praying and during ministration, he said, the power of God will flow into that body. And it was as though he was speaking to me direct. Instantaneously, I felt a cold sensation from my head running through. But at the time this happened, I was encouraging another person, those who were counseling, I said, check up your body. Not knowing that my miracle has taken place in my body. And the reason I didn't know, I take notice of it immediately, was that the headache is quite subtle. When I'm busy, it will give way. But when I am resting now, it will come. But now, by the time now we retired on that day, getting back to the hostel now, I, dis I, di I discovered that the whole thing has gone away, even up till now. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. Severe headache that I've been troubling him for some time vanished after the prayer of the man of God. We'll take one more testimony before we go to the social media. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, my name is Sister Janet Mado. I'm from Oji River region in Enugu in a group of districts. My testimony goes like this. Since I've been praying for sanctification, I'm always too harsh to my mother. Any small thing she will do, I will shout on her. But since I came this great crusade, I've been telling God, God, I want you to sanctify me. And again, before Throughout today, there's something that happens in our session. I didn't fear it at anything. I just see peace of God in my life. Praise the Lord. Another testimony goes to my mother. My mother is old enough that it, since we came for this crusade, she, she's hardly for her to get up and, by herself to go and urinate. And she used to urinate three or four times before they run up. But I was surprised this morning. My mother can walk up by herself 
to go out and urinate. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please. We go to social media, please. We have While we wait for that, my name is okay, he's up now. Pastor Manuel Orchi from uh, New York, USA. By the message of God, the Lord did something in my life, and I would like to give glory to the Lord for that. I've had this chronic pain in my back for a very long time, and as our Father in the Lord was praying. And I stood up by faith, and he said, lay your hands on where you are experiencing anything. I put my hand on that back, and as the father, our Father the Lord was praying, I experienced a sound, a cracking sound. And I knew that I got my healing instantaneously. And when I stretched and moved around, that pain is gone. And I give God all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Papa, um, Pastor finished praying tonight. She went to the bathroom to brush, and lo and behold, she was the gum was no more bleeding. And she came to meet me, and I told her you have been healed, and you need to share the testimony. We give God all the glory in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus, I'm my name Precious, I come from any good region. I'm here to testify to the glory of God, what God has done for me in my life, through the man of God. 
God delivered me from 22 years of bedwetting and spirit of headaches since Thursday last week. And As you can hear from her, she's testifying that bedwetting 22 years gone. Praise the Lord. The next one. Shaibu, ni dege Ausa Church, Okiafa, Solo Lagos. This woman you can see is testifying from Lagos State, had strange movements in her body for 21 years. This had persisted, but after divine touch, that movement disappeared away. completely. Praise the Lord. And we have several more still coming. We we'll take this one from Bella Anastasia. She says, by the grace of God, waiting for more The young man you can see there said he had been falling and rising, struggling with sin, but after divine touch, he said he has clear salvation and in his heart he knows that he is now completely saved. Praise the Lord. We now return to the overseer for now. Is that your clapping? Amen. Are the testimonies are going on? Please check yourself. You discover your own miracle. Join them in all seats. Don't many people are there already, but you can have your chance to give your own testimony. Join them. 
Now we take the next testifier, please. Make it brief so that more people will be given opportunity. Let's go, please. The next Praise testifier. the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, my name is uh, Miss Ades Zewibo from my boy state. The testimony I want to give is because what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He healed me and equally saved me from sin. Praise the Lord. Yes, before now I was having this problem of the eye that I cannot look directly to the screen or light like that. But now I can clearly see. I can clearly look directly to the screen. Praise the Lord. And as well, I gave my life to Jesus in the year 2018. But as time went on, the devil laid this doubt in my heart that he started telling me, am I sure that I'm saved? Something like that. I was troubled because of that feeling in me. I keep praying to God, even going in and out of altar call like that. But that doubt is still there in me. But by the special grace of God, Saturday night, after the prayer of our dad in the Lord, I felt this peace in my heart. And now I can stand boldly and say that I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. The next testifier, please. Praise the Lord. My name is Chuku Priscilla. I'm from Ankano District, Abang. I'm here to testify what the Lord has done for me. In this program of Divine Church, God hid me from a frequent urine on Sunday morning when I came here for service because I prayed unto God that only seeing the man of God eye to eye, face to face, all my problem shall be gone. And as I have prayed, God answered my prayer. And again, today, that frequent urine, God have healed me. Praise be to God. And again, BP. I came here with a symptom of BP. After praying to God, God healed me that BP. I am healed and I am okay in Jesus' name. I said the Lord who have done it for me, let his name be praised in Jesus' name. Put your hand together for Jesus. Frequent urine, gone. Also high blood pressure, gone. And he say he's short now. The next person, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Nathan Makwe. I'm from Manili local government. By the grace of God, I am born again. So I want to testify what God has done for me in this crusade. Since 2019, I've been having health challenge from various hospitals. But what made me to come and testify is the serial pain I've been having here, within this joint here. It doesn't allow me to eat anything freely or to open my mouth freely. Each time I ate something, I'll be hearing noise of bones here. Not only that, I was living on drug. But when I was coming here on Thursday, I said I will never test any drug to see whether drug is greater than God. But by the grace of God, since Thursday, today, I never tested any drug and I never died. I'm healthier than that. Praise the Lord. So yesterday, when our father in law was preaching, he said that is, you should touch the place where we are having pain and they, you should believe that God should heal you. So when he was running off the message, he said that uh, any sign of relief from the pain, let us take it to be a kind of uh, a beginning of the healing. So I claimed it. So at that time, I've been having serious relief from these pains here. It was unfortunate that I did not give the testimony today, yesterday. But today, by the grace of God, the relief is more than that. And I'm so optimistic that uh, at this very pain is going, that all that pain will join shoot and go. And I'll, I'll be totally free as the man of God has pronounced. Praise the Lord. If you are clapping, clap very well for Jesus. The pain that he has been suffering from is gone. And gone forever. He says he's going, but he's gone. 
the next person praise the lord the lord is good and all the time the lord is good uh, my name is with the michael by the grace of god i'm saved i'm from uh, atarele art group uh, really god saw me through in this program since 25 years i've been suffering from diabetes and uh, every day swallowing drugs going from hospital to hospital but no avail but thank god that for the bible say i will not spend my money on what is not bread and he really did it for me in this program uh, after i came on thursday on friday after the prayer of man of god in fact i got my healing uh, reason why I did not advise in that time is for me to testify to, to check myself. I don't eat other things people eat. I don't sleep very well. In the night, I bring buckets of water and put my legs because it will, my two legs will be too hot for me. But God has delivered me. And I say, May His name be exalted in Jesus' name. 25 years diabetes taken away on Friday and he said he wanted to stay and he tested it. Now all the symptoms are gone. Put your hand together for Jesus. The next testifier, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm by name Ohajua Deborah. Firstly, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul in the year 2006 by Pastor W.F. Kumui. I'm thanking God because that day has been a special day that has been keeping me till now. And I want to give thanks to the Lord for His mercies and loving care over my life. Praise the Lord! Some days ago, I had a serious pain at my right leg, the right leg tie joints. And I came here, though I believe I had a voice that if I come here and go back that Wednesday, that is, God is not God. I came and I left. The pain was still there. It makes me to be limping. And I was like, God, you told me this. Does it mean you are not God? I believe despite everything you are. But thanks to the Lord, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even now I am completely whole, like completely whole. So I'm here to give God all the glory. I'm not taking any for granted. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. The pain on the knees that I've been making her to limp was taken away. The next person, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm um, Benjamin. So I'm very glad to be in your midst. Firstly, I thank God for how he saved my soul. So my testimony is this. I'm here to testify how God removed that Adamic nature from me. I mean, he uprooted the root of sin out of my heart. Because... I gave my life to Christ. I have my salvation. I'm working for the Lord. But you know, if you know you have given your life to Christ here, yeah, you know that if you do not have that second work of grace, your work will all be by struggle. I've been praying to God, give me this work of grace. My prayers seem to be not avail. But our Jesus told us that when Elijah was praying, he asked his servant, go out and look. The servant had a discouragement eyes. He looked and said, I saw nothing. And some people used to conclude their things like that. He said, you should not conclude. Keep praying and the Lord will locate you. So, was it the day before yesterday? He was praying. He was talking about freedom. Remember the other program, the other global said he came? He did not talk about that. He only talked about how to give your life to Christ. But this one, he stressed on that. So, to cut the long story short, Jesus' power came and reacted with the power of the Lord. 
and it came and formed freedom in my heart. May the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hand together for Jesus. His testimony in summary is that God sanctified him. The next testifier before we go to the online. Praise the Lord. My name is Sir Eko Loma Miracle. I'm here to testify how God healed me. For about a month now, I've been having a dislocation of my hand. I tried to carry a bag and I am all of a sudden I had a dislocation of my hand. But since I came here on Friday, God healed me. Um, on, I, I came out on Friday to give the testimony, but I just said, okay, let me go back and see if I will still feel the pain. But since that day till now, I am not feeling the pains again. Praise the Lord. And, my, and another testimony, on 2019, when I was in Owerri, I was doing a business. So a woman came to me and said, please help me. I want to start up this business in a little way. I should help him, give him some, go some goods that he is going to pay. She's going to pay me back. So I told her that I'm, I don't sell credit. I'm not going to give her. She begged me. I said, okay, I'll give you, but please try to return the money. She said, she accepted. I gave her the goods. Um, a week, two weeks, I couldn't see her. I called her. She said she's not going to pay me the money again. That she, could, she couldn't sell the goods. I said, okay, return them. If you can't sell them, return them. And she said, okay, but I, couldn't, I didn't see her since 2019. When I came here, the pastor said that all we lost, we will get them back. When I was going on Sunday, I went outside the gate. I saw her outside the gate selling market. And I told her, Madam, please give me my money. And she tried to deny it, but at the end of the day, she gave me the money. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. We quickly go to the online briefly. We have And to the doctors and the only solution is that they will have to remove the ovaries and cross but to the glory of god after yesterday's prayer she went back for the scan this she went back for the scan this morning to check and according to the doctors there is no more ovarian cysts you can see those are the medical reports. Big names are bowing to the divine church. Praise the Lord. And now we go for the life testimony from a dual state. A dual state life. The testimony from Edo State, as we try to link up with them, we'll stand by Adamawa State now. Adamawa State Live. Adamawa State Live. That was how I got my healing. God has healed me and I believe I'm completely healed. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I say praise the Lord. No. I'm Sister Deborah Chris. From Yola region, Adamoa said. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for... I want to thank the Lord for his healing hands upon my life. On Friday, 
precisely 9.30, many years ago, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ at Campground Yola, Adamwa State. On a message, a night to be remembered. I thank God for that. I want to thank the Lord for his healing hands upon my life. On last crusade of our father in the Lord at Caraba State, I was having a swell up in my secret parts of the body. To the extent that I hardly sit down, I hardly stand up. More than one week, I was suffering with this swell up in my body. So on the fifth day of that program, I was in the church. So as a prayer of the man of God, my father in the Lord was going on. The swelling got broken. And I went home before daybreak. That place where I was broken up, the water flowed out. The thing dried up. Pain has gone. Praise the Lord. Not only that, another one is this. In this divine touch, I was, I'm having an ulcer for more than five years. I used to feel fire burning in my back from my waist to the chest. Fire, real fire is burning there. At times, if that fire starts burning in my back, I will look for somebody to give me ice block. Or if possible, I will lie down. Then they will be rubbing me in that ice block on my body to get relief from that fire that is burning in my body. But to, to my greatest surprise, in this crusade, when my father and the Lord was praying on Saturday night, after the prayer, I go home. I was not feeling anything, but I couldn't notice. The next day being the fourth day, nothing happened. Until today, that fire has gone. Nothing like Osa. Praise the Rewa group. I want to testify the goodness of God in my life. There is three things that God has done for me. He done for my daughter, he done for my son, and he done for me. Praise the name of the Lord. My testimony is going like that. During uh, uh, signs and wonders, my daughter called me that she's not Okay, I say, what happened? She told me that they are going to do operation for her. I said, what is wrong with you? She said she saw her stomach is growing up. I said, ah, she went and scanned and see fibro and appendix. I said, why do you didn't tell me? And they already booked the, the uh, 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 operation. Later, she told me, I said, it's okay, I have to come down. She said, no. She asked uh, people that they can take care of her. Before that time, I, I, told, I said, okay, the program is going on in Calabar. Let's wait for the miracle that God can do for us. She said, it's okay. She, we are continuing to pray and Leader, they are praying. God took control. During the signs and wonders, we prayed. And our Father in the Lord prayed. I connect her. Sometimes she's on duty. She cannot attend. I connect her with our daddy. I say, when her daddy is praying, just pray. And we are praying, God will intervene. Praise the name of the Lord. God has done it. She went and checked. She said, ah, Mommy, I'm not feeling anything again. Praise the name of the Lord. And A year, the hand had been withered. He couldn't lift or stretch it, but 
after the prayer of the man of God tonight. And we came to the final amen. That withered hand came alive. Take a look at it. The power of God. Praise the Lord. We now go to Worry Delta States. Worry Delta States live. The Lord. the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. My name is Christina Egomon. By the grace of God, I am saved. I just want to testify the goodness of God upon my life. I am from a group, Deco Group Church in Worry. So, before this program started, about two weeks later, I have a pain on my breast part, one of my, side of my breast. So the pain was severe. I took drugs. Later, I come to one of our pastors here. He prayed with me. And the pain was still continuing. But when the program started, I told God that this place, I'm going to get my healing. So I came with that body to this place. I was sitting down in one of the chair praying. But I felt that somebody touched me. I look around. As I opened my eye, nobody touched me. So I saw the touch of the Lord. Since that day to today, the pain vanished. That is what the Lord did for me. Praise the Lord. Uh, for a live testimony, Calabar Live. Uh, uh, live. live. From Ibo, From Ibo class, 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 Calabar. It's about my health. I was very down in health, 20, 2020. The thing tortured me. I, I cannot sleep. I went back to hospital. I did tests. As tests came out, the result said it's pneumonia. They treated that. That's how I'm suffering, suffering. Every night I cannot sleep. In 2021, that the same pains came. Two days, two weeks before the signs and wonders for the Niji, I went back to the hospital, teaching hospital. They referred me to do tests. I did four tests. As a result came out, they said it was not pneumonia again, it's asthma. Ah, I shout, I say asthma. None of my family was suffering such sickness. As the uh, signs and wonder for the Niji came on 22, I attended the signs and wonders for the Niji. The day, second day, a GO about to play, pray, he declared, he said a word. He said, if you are here for signs and wonders, if you need it, grab it now. Immediately, she went to, he started praying. He mentioned my case. That asthma from there disappeared. From today, still that day, today, I did not take any medicine. Even I can stand on farm. I can drink cold water. Everything. I'm, those things I'm not doing. I'm doing it now. Praise the Lord. Where Priye Ika wrote, do you remember the advert, the advertisement for this program that told us that alert will show? All the way in United Kingdom, alert don't show. Priye said, I went for three different professional interviews, was offered job. The third one was during this program. On Friday, they took others. But because I needed that same job, God made it in such a way that one of the other persons was turned down and prayer was taken. Alert, don't show. Divine touch has delivered. Praise the Lord.
And mind you, COVID-19 is still bowing to the hand of Divine Touch. And this is coming all the way from Olon Shola from USA. He says, my symptoms were still there till yesterday. But after the prayer of the man of God yesterday, all the symptoms vanished. COVID-19 healed completely. Praise the Lord. And finally, before we return to the state of Asia, we'll take you to Abba Live. Abba in Abia, Abia, Abia State. State, Southeast Nigeria. Abba, Abba, Abba Live. Live. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. My names are Patience Godwin Peter from Deeper Life High School, Abba Campus. By the grace of God, I am born again. If I want to testify the goodness of the Lord upon my life. There was this pain, abdomen, abdominal pain I've been having severely. That thing has been coming and be going. But last week, this pain was so severe that I cannot control it. I have to take permission from my leader and go to hospital. I did lab tests. I did, uh, I did lab and they tell me that I'm having, I'm having bladder stone. I come back, the pain was so severe. I tell, and they asked me to go for, for, uh, for, for operation. Then my leader said that the program is already on. I should wait for the program. After the program, before we know what to do, that the Lord is going to touch me in this program. But by the grace of God, that the Lord touched me in this program. After the preaching and the prayer of the servant of God on Monday, which is yesterday, the Lord touched me and all those pain has gone. I am healed. Praise the Lord. We now return to the state overseer. Praise the Lord. Amen. So many testimonies. How many of you have got your own? Where are you? I've got my testimony. It shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. And there are a lot of people lining up here. Some are sitting there. They have all been interviewed and they have striking wonderful testimonies. But because of time, we're going to round up from here. And I want to tell you, as you get back, give your testimony. And keep sharing testimony. Talking to your neighbor. This coming program, September 24 to October 3rd. What is the title again? The team. What's the team? Divine Solution. And from here to that time, you will enjoy your miracle. So keep telling people, tell them to get ready because divine solution will come their way. Shall we all rise up as we praise the name of the Lord for what he has done for us? Rise on your feet. All others, you can go back, give your testimony in your very district. Rise up. Re